Hello and welcome everybody. Merry Christmas as well. Lionheart here with a video I've been working on for a little while and wasn't sure exactly when I'd get around to doing it, but hey-ho, I got around to doing it. And today I'm going to be looking at um, basically those of you that I, I know over this Christmas period, always seems to be over the Christmas period, you look to upgrade or build a new computer. Now I'll be doing uh, uh, kind of an upgrade video, what I recommend uh, later on, and that will be kind of associated specifically with what you guys want to see in the comments after this video, but I'll explain all that after I've actually kind of done the ma major part of this video, which is to show you two PC builds. One, what I would call a kind of top-end enthusiast class um, PC um, put together from parts, um, but the site that I'm using, as far as I know, they still offer a service where for an extra £50, uh, you can, uh, they will put together your parts for you and basically build the computer, which is still cheaper than buying a pre-built alternative, as I'll show you guys later. Now, uh, just a few things briefly before I get into it. I'll be showing you two builds, as I said. One, a kind of a, a top-class, um, eight hundred pound-ish uh, budget PC, which would be ideally to last as long as possible, and max games out for quite a few years to come and then another PC which is aimed at those sort of just getting into the uh, kind of their first proper gaming PC around the 500 to 600 pound market now some of you guys might be going wow that's still too high in which case um, I would always say if you can afford to wait and save up a little bit more it is worth it if you can save a little bit extra more and get higher um, high quality or rather more powerful parts to start with you're future proofing yourself for longer However, if there's enough of you saying, could you do like a £400 gaming machine, uh, comment below and I will make another video of a £400 build. Now, all of the computers I'm showing you are not including a copy of uh, Windows or anything like that because one, now that Windows 8 has come out, some people want to use that on their machines. Personally, I don't see the point of it because for a gaming PC, I don't have a touchscreen. And one of the major, I know it's not one of the, the it's not just the only feature of Windows 8, but a main selling point is that it is for, you know, kind of the touch screen, all those interfaces. And personally, I've got nothing wrong with Windows 7. I think it works perfectly, but I please do not descend into Windows 8 is better, no, Windows 7 is better in the comments because it doesn't help anyone. Um, you can pick up a copy, a retail copy of Windows 7 along with all these PC builds if you would like. Um, but I'm not including the prices because some of you might already have a um, copy of Windows 7 that you just want to install anyway. Uh, the, so that saves you money there. I'm not including uh, monitors, screens, or um, keyboards or mice. Those are all extra peripherals which uh, you guys can put in. But uh, the main budgets I'm focusing on an 800-ish pound budget and a 500 to 600 pound budget uh, gaming machine. No perif uh, no extra peripherals, screen, speakers, keyboard, uh, mouse sort of thing, and no. Uh, operating system OS, i.e. Windows 7 or 8. Uh, those will be extras that you'd put into the build. Uh, if you want me to do one including all that, then perhaps again, if there's enough people saying for a certain price range, I will do it. If you're working with euros or dollars and you want to know, uh, then either send me a link to a site where I can do that for you guys, because um, I'm more than happy to do a, a US version of this sort of thing. But um, this is just one of the easiest sites for me to do it. Again, I'm not by no means suggesting that you guys use this site. It's called Novatech. Um, but in another way, by no means don't not use this site. Um, I've used them for seven years, this company, or more like eight or nine nearly. And for me, they've been absolutely fantastic. They've got a great customer service uh, team, great technical support team as well. Very good at sorting out problems should any arise. Um, pricing, generally quite competitive. You might find it a bit cheaper now and then. But for me, the main selling point and the reason why I use this site is because their main uh, HQ warehouse and showroom is about a 20-minute drive for me. So that means I always just pop down there in the car and pick it up. I never get delivery because I can just pop straight down there, pick it up, see a person. And, and if I again, if I've got a problem, I can drive down there and actually talk to someone, which is brilliant. But again, you know, talked enough about <laughs> all the various choices and stuff but I'm just using this ease of access and I'm sure you guys can understand that so first of all I am showing you the uh, I check you right the 800 pound budget extreme um, but I will be showing you a few kind of variations and things that you can do to lower money or, or change and things now take no non, uh, no heed of the fact that some of these things aren't uh, you can't order them right now again this is just to show what parts I would personally look to get um, 
for a PC. Now, by no means am I a PC building guru, but I have spent a fair few years putting together PCs, both for myself and my friends and other people. So I'd like to think I've picked up a few things. Also, when it comes to power supplies, I will go into it a little bit more. Um, again, everyone is entitled to their own opinion on power supplies. Personally, I like to, for an enthusiast class PC, I like to get a more powerful PSU than I need, just in case and just also for future headroom if I want to add in another graphics card for SLI and stuff. Now while technically most top-end computers only draw between 350 and perhaps even 400 watts of uh, power, I normally use a 650 or 600 watt power supply in most of my builds purely because there's that extra headroom should you need it, should you add an extra card in, should you add something like water cooling in, it's all there. Plus a lot of the lower wattage PSUs don't have all the extra cables for SLI and things like that so that's why you end up getting a 650 watt power supply even if you don't need it or even if you only need 500 watts or something like that because um, one there's not enough cables and also it's something to do there's I won't get into the technical side of it but there's something to do with the voltages basically on the power supply the supply or graphics card a lot of lower end wattage power supplies such as even some 400 500 watt ones won't have enough to run the latest graphics cards even though they only need sort of I don't know what 150 watts or something just for the graphics card to run so anyway I, I won't go into that anymore but let's look at this build so it comes to a total if you're collecting it I'm not including delivery again not including an OS any peripherals any extras things like that it comes to 780 um, pounds which uh, and dollar to pound dot com just so because I'm bound to get some people saying how much is that in dollars so it's 1258 now again, in the US you are actually lucky because you generally your components for your PCs are a fair bit cheaper so you'll probably be able to pick up a build for this maybe around about the thousand dollar mark. But again, if there's enough people from the US or that use US dollars to buy their parts, if there's enough of you that would like me to do a specific uh, US targeted PC build video or buying, uh, buying guide, then comment below and I will look into that for you guys. So anyway, let's crack on. Now, as you can see, the processor I've chosen for this PC is um, an i5-3570K. Now, that's the latest Intel um, Ivy Bridge CPU. Now, I haven't gone for the i7 purely because for gaming, i5 will do your job hands down, easy peasy. It will also do a lot of rendering work, and it's a very gutsy, powerful uh, processor. You only really need this, the i7 if you're doing a lot of extra rendering um, at work and programs that are very CPU intensive. Um, really, even uh, for games like Total War series like Shogun 2, which is very CPU intensive, the i you're not going to see much difference between the i5 and the i7 um, in, ter in terms of that it's got more cores because, again, Shogun 2 doesn't utilize that many cores. So it's more about the clock speed. But this comes with a decent clock speed. It will turbo boost to 3.8, I think. But then obviously because you've got the K to it, the K means that you can overclock it, that it's not just locked to the turbo boost mode. So you can overclock it to your heart's desire, 4, 4 gigahertz, 4.5. Some people can push them up to 5 with some voltage tweaks and some extra cooling and what have you. Uh, I'm not including an extra CPU cooler in this build. Um, it comes with a stock cooler, but that should be fine. Um, but you can pick up an aftermarket cooler, a really good one for about £30. Uh, again, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I will do a roundup of those in another video. So let's look at the case. Now we've got the Thermal Take Commander uh, MSI Snow Edition White. And it says no PSU, basically it doesn't come with a PSU with it. And I think I've got a picture of it here. Here we go, we can bring up some pictures. So you guys can see the inside of the case. It's a big case, and apparently it's got what's called, uh, or what they've termed, a um, an extra large VGA um, support bay, uh, which we can probably see on that first picture. Actually, oh, it's a thermal take. It's not an MSI. Therm it's a thermal take commander. So it looks very nice. It looks very nice. So sort of if you're going for the Christmassy mood as well. So if we look inside it with this picture. You can see from where my mouse is to the hard drive base here that extra space is specifically being designed and put in for your graphics cards. So it says here, extra long graphics cards such as the GTX 590 and the uh, Radeon HD 6990, which are, were, at the time when they came out, some of the biggest cards you can possibly get. The top-end cards are all sort of similar size. None of them are bigger as far as I know, but basically it will fit in. Now, it's 4398, which it's i mean it's it's not a, a ridiculously expensive case i've got one of those to show you in a moment um but it's a pretty it's a pretty reasonable sort of mid-tier case um now again 
the reason why I've chosen this is that it's big. It, the fact that it's got an extra long VGA support is a big selling point because if you do want to upgrade, graphics cards are getting bigger these days. Some of them are getting smaller, which is good, but you want plenty of room. You don't want everything squashed in. You want to have good airflow. You want to have plenty of room to upgrade if you need to, and this case does that. Another case that I um, would recommend that I would sort of suggest uh, if you don't like the look of this um, it's pretty plain but it's a classic it's the Antec 300 a um, little bit more expensive but pretty much people that I know and a lot of people will hopefully agree with me here people have been using this as kind of the standard for PC building uh, sort of gaming cases for quite some time the Antec 300 has been doing very well um, but I personally like the look of the Thermal Tech Commander Plus it's a bit cheaper uh, yeah, it looks good. So another alternative is this Zalman Z11, um, and it's a it's got a lot of things about airflow in the descriptions. You can see these fins and blue fins. So it looks very nice. Um, it's talking about again extra space for um, big graphics cards and stuff. So I'm just showing you these because a lot of you will think aesthetically when you're buying your case. You may not actually look at your case for that much of time, but to be fair, this is what your whole PC is going to be inside. So a lot of you are going to be like, it's not wrong to sort of want a case that looks nice. Uh, finally, uh, we've got the ridiculously expensive but mahoosive uh, NZXT Phantoms. My brother has one of these, and while some of you would consider this a waste of money, and personally for me, I'm happy with the current case that I've got, I wouldn't need to spend 100 quid on this. He wants to treat himself, and a lot of people out there will want to treat themselves to something that looks like this. Um, it is a huge beastie. You are definitely never going to run out of space. Now, it looks big in the pictures. It's even bigger than that in actual real life. I mean, I thought my case was big. This is huge in real life. Um, my brother's is crazy. It's got so many slots for hard drives and things. It's a sort of... Uh, I guess a multiple hard drive person's wet dream. You've just got so much space here for for everything and anything you want. You've got all those bays for hard drives, fan controllers. Um, you've got loads of places to put all your things for sort of uh, water cooling and things like that out the back. And there are so many fans in this thing. It's amazing. And it d it does generally look awesome. I can't complain about that. So that is, if you really want to go the extra mile and you really want to look flashy, these cases do look awesome. You can get them in red and white. So I'm going to close that down. Anyway, so we're going to cover the motherboard. Pretty much it's... Uh, one of the latest uh, Z77 um, socket 1155 boards that fits the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge range, I believe. Maybe not Sandy Bridge. Uh, definitely the Ivy Bridge anyway. It works on that socket. Um, so obviously that works with the processor. It's um, one of the it's the, one of the cheapest ones you can possibly get for the Z77 series. Um, it's a good Asus board. Asus is very good motherboard makers. I've personally got a Gigabyte one, and there is an alternative Gigabyte one for around about the same price that you can look into. But again, it all comes down to personal preference. What do you want? What do you don't want? Um, so if you're an Asus fan, this is for you. If you're a Gigabyte fan or an MSI fan, you really can't go wrong particularly with a motherboard unless you pick one up that's the wrong socket type, in which case you didn't really check that your processor and motherboard would fit. Um, which is, it's not too difficult um, to not get it right because, I mean, even here in the basket view screen, we can see that the processor says um, socket LGA1155 and we just have to pair that up with a motherboard that says socket 1155. So, yeah, pretty good motherboard. It's got USB 3.0 on there, loads of optional lectures. I'm not going to go into that too much. I'm not even going to stop on this. It's just a, a DVD rewritable drive. Cheap one, but it's a good one. Um, yeah, you don't need more than that. If you want to put a Blu-ray drive in, be my guest. Um, right, now we've got the power supply, as I was talking about. And I've chosen for this build a Corsair. Uh, now, another company, if you want a slightly cheaper power supply, is and it's a good reliable one, is OCZ. By whatever you do, even if you disagree with me about the wattages and um, you know, you're know you fine, because some people will buy a low-end watt power supply and find that somehow it still works uh, and your PC works. Now that's fine because especially if you buy um, one of the top branded ones that are, that are good and reliable like Corsair or OCZ then you might get away with it and you'll be fine. But whatever you do please do not buy like an unknown branded um, it might say it's a thousand watt power supply and only be about 20 pounds. If a power supply is that cheap do not buy. No. Unless it is Corsair or OCZ having a ridiculous sale and the reviews for it are good and you do a little bit of research just to check that it's not them selling off dud uh, components, which obviously they wouldn't do, but you never know. Um, 
don't whatever you do buy a cheap unbranded or unknown brand power supply the two brands that i would recommend you look at and don't go outside of that bracket really corsair or occ um, i know there are some other reliable brands in there but for me those are the two that i've used in the past the most and they're solid um, i've had terrible experiences with um, foolishly buying an unbranded power supply it was like a 750 watt one i thought oh that'd be great what it's only like 20 pounds sweet it's better than this the 80 odd quid one i'd have to fork out if i was buying one of these branded ones um, fried my computer well rather it just fried my motherboard thankfully so not everything uh, but fried up my motherboard so i had to fork out for and obviously an, i got the power supply um covered anyway so that was fine but i have to pay for a new power supply but i had to get a new power supply in the end uh but mainly I had to fork out for a new motherboard because mine died and fried so don't risk it it's really really not worth it that's why i'm putting in a top end corsair enthusiast series tx650 um it's got good power levels good certification uh, and all that and Corsair is a solid power supply brand your alternative as I've said is basically um, that I would recommend is a brand called OCZ and they're generally cheaper about between five to ten pounds cheaper for the same wattage um, and I'll cover that in the cheaper PC in a moment but this is the one I'd recommend it's 650 watts so you've got plenty of headroom to upgrade and what have you Corsair you've got their superb um, build and quality there so that's fine RAM I've gone again for Corsair because um, I really like the fins on it. They look awesome. I've actually got this set of RAM in my PC, and it is ridiculously cheap, thirty-four ninety-nine. Um, I bought it when it was thirty-nine ninety-nine. So if you guys buy into this, you're getting it five quid cheaper than me. But it's high-speed RAM, eight gig of it. You don't really need much more than eight gig. Most games, are, again, some people are going to come on and probably say, "Oh, but most games only use um, four gig or whatever." I've thrown 8 gig in there, I do an extra bit of rendering work now and then, and it also helps with managing background tasks and having a lot of chat windows open and things like that. But really, I mean, you can't fault it because generally you'll find 4 gig sets for nearly 30 quid. You might as well spend the extra and get 8 gig, um, especially these Corsair ones. They're brilliant RAM sticks, so that's that. Um, now, the gra actually, I'll, go, I'll come back to the graphics card in a moment, but finally we'll just look at this uh, this hard drive. Seagate Barracuda, uh, 1 terabyte. I've just thrown 1 terabyte in there for this... Um, for this build, if you want a 500 gig and a 500 gig, you'll split it up that way. If you want to add in a solid state drive, um, then again, optional extras for you to add in or tweak and things like that. But I've chosen the uh, the MSI GX670. Uh, now, I am an NVIDIA um, a fanboy, I guess, when it comes to the graphics. I'm team green for graphics cards. Um, I have owned AMD cards before, so I'm not biased on that front. I'm biased on the front that I hate AMD's driver system, that you have a separate display driver and their Catalyst Control Center, which, for me, I've had terrible, terrible compatibility issues trying to get the two things to sync and download in harmony, which is why uh, about uh, nearly two years, a year and a half or so ago, I bought I upgraded from a, a 5770 to a GTX 570 that I have now. Um, which is absolutely awesome. Um, it's two hundred and eighty nine ninety nine. Generally, you are now starting to find the price of six seventies coming down from the three hundred pound mark to sort of lowering into the the high two hundreds. Um, this is a superb card. Now, while I can't with there's n no official specs yet for it, um, and I can't give. I'm uh, by no means do I know what Rome 2 will require but I but I would reckon that this card has a good shot of running it pretty much maxed out um I would be very impressed if the this couldn't handle it uh, even on a 920 by 1080 resolution um maybe you wouldn't put all the uh, anti-aliasing up to maximum but you could still have two or four times on I reckon this card could handle Rome 2 Rome to Total War quite happily uh, on ultra settings, but again, you please don't quote me on that. Um, probably by the time Rome Two comes out uh, next October, there will be the seven ser seven hundred series of Nvidia cards, and probably as it goes, they'll be even more powerful. So, uh, but if you're looking to get one now and you don't want to wait till October because that's a long time to wait for one game, while there's a lot of other games you probably want to play in between, this is a good solid card. Um, and I would highly recommend a 670. 
Um, an alternative if you want to lower the price because this is pushing 800 quid and you've still got to add in the cost of a an OS if you don't have one or a monitor and what have you. Then I would recommend the MSI GTX 660 Ti. Now it's about well, 70 odd quid cheaper than the 670 and you can overclock this thing uh, a little bit, just a few tweaks and you'll pretty much get similar performance to the 670 um, with a bit of work. Um, but generally I would recommend if you can the 670 over it. Uh, has a better boosting system and it's got um, a higher um, memory bus rate on it so it will handle 1080p and higher resolutions better but this card is still going to be a solid card you'll still be able to run all your games that are currently out now on ultra settings um, um, but yeah this is a kind of a cheaper alternative for this high-end build so that would bring you down to just shy of 700 pounds or just just about 700 pounds um, yeah, so that's basically the ultimate build that I'm putting up there. If you think that this isn't ultimate enough and you want, say, a thousand pound build, then again, comment below. Your feedback will derive what videos I do next after this if there's enough of you asking for a certain one. So thumb up someone's comment if they say a thousand pound build or something like that, because th I will count thumbs up as popularity and things like that for it. So I'm just going to close that down and bring up my secondary uh, Chrome window. So I've got two baskets. And here we go, we've got the, the second one. PC which is working out at 643 but I do have some alternatives to make it cheaper so fear not that this doesn't seem that much cheaper than the other one and those of you that want to get get into the gaming scene with a PC uh, will be feeling a bit ugh. as I said again if you want kind of a 400 450 budget uh, pound budget then again uh, comment and I will deal with that in another video because I know that you probably guys some of you will want a as cheap as possible but able to run games nicely PC uh, and I will work on one of them if there's enough uh, desire for it. Again some of you might think why am I not using AMD chips primarily because I'm a Total War gamer um, especially since Shogun 2 is so CPU heavy um, AMD processors are really struggling to match Intel for uh, FPS um, and, and performance so that's why I'm recommending Intel plus when I put together a PC, I try as well, even if it does cost a little bit extra, to make it as future-proof as possible so you don't have to end up spending 300 odd pounds each year just to upgrade and keep on going forward. Ideally, I want you to last with this for like many, many years, maybe just upgrading the graphics card now and then. That's why another reason why I put in such powerful, um, or capable rather, power supplies so that you don't have to upgrade them all the time as well. So let's quickly run through this. I've covered a lot of the detail in what I've said previously on the previous PC, but we've got the uh, the same processor in again. I put that straight in there. You can overclock it as well. It's that version. The same case because I thought it was good. You've got a lot of space as well to upgrade with. Same motherboard because again, pretty good. Uh, same DVD drive because it's thirteen pound, fourteen pounds. It's ch cheap as chips there. Same RAM set because again, very good um, deal there. Thirty four ninety nine for 8 gig can't go much wrong there now you've got a cheaper power supply which I'll bring up in a new tab when it loads my internet's being a bit slow right here we go so we've got the OCZ Mod Extreme Pro 600 watt silent SLI already ATX2 modular power supply <gasps> that was a mouthful um, it's got plenty of watts available and what have you for um, a power supply uh, and it will run top end cards happily um, it's got a good uh, power efficiency rating as well and again this is one of the power supplies that I would recommend uh, for quality and things like that but again as you can see it's nearly 15 pounds cheaper than the Corsair which I showed in the previous build and that was only 50 watts more powerful so as you can see this is a cheap uh, this OC are generally a cheaper brand than Corsair um, but I, as I said I would recommend Corsair for the pro top end builds OCZ I mean, if you can find a Corsair that fits what you want, then by all means go for it. And if it fits your budget, then definitely go for it. But OCC are generally a bit cheaper, which is why I've chosen that one there. Uh, and then we've got a 500 gig rather than a terabyte hard drive here. Brings costs down a bit. And then, to get you guys going, um, I don't want to bring that tab up, I've put in a GTX 660 uh, graphics card. NVIDIA, again, personally, because I, I know a lot more about NVIDIA than I do AMD, 
and again personal preference but I will deal with some AMD alternatives in a moment to again bring the price down now this is £175 so we're talking uh, a lot less so over £100 less than the 670 um, but it has a decent amount of processing units co could, uh, called Cubta Cores um, it's got it's a gigabyte model and gigabyte like to overclock their graphics cards um, it's got really high frequencies on the core and uh, memory and it's going to perform really well again I would ha see this happily running all of today's current games at l on ultra settings maybe you have to drop the odd setting to high but I mean you're really not going to notice it that much but this should still handle games fantastically well um, so that's why I put it in there but again that might be a bit too much for some of you so I'm going to remove it uh, from the build list and we can see it takes us down to 467 now let's look at some alternatives now I've got two alternatives from the AMD actually no first of all before we look at the cheap alternatives if you prefer AMD for the same price range as the GTX 660 uh, I'd recommend you look at the uh, AMD 7870 um, very capable card and if you go for the Gigabyte model you get Far Cry, free, uh, Far Cry 3 for free Ooh. three for free that's hard to say um, obviously there's all custom fan modes and things like that Froza keeps them extra cool uh, the MSI one it like, keeps temperatures lower so that's a good one if you're worried about case temperatures and what have you um, but again why I've chosen such big cases should help with the airflow anyway so that's sort of the same price mark so that would still bring you to the uh, the 600 odd pound mark however cheaper alternatives from uh, AMD we have the 780 50, uh, which is quite a considerably bit cheaper, but not that much uh, weaker than the 7870. Um, obviously, I probably would recommend not just getting the 1 gig version, I'd go up to the 2 gig version. The cheapest one is uh, 142 99 uh, Some customers not too pleased there, they're giving it 3 stars, but you know, each to their own, uh, as I've said anyway. But yeah, I would recommend getting a 2 gig model. Uh, so if we added that into the basket, we would be looking at a total of £600, just shy of £600. Uh, but the what card I'm going to recommend if you have to skip a little bit on the graphics card is a NVIDIA GTX 650 Ti. Uh, very capable card still, and you get free uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Um, now, there probably are some lower-end AMD alternatives, but I'm not that all... Um, AMD these days, so I guess something like um, an AMD 7830 or an AMD 7770 would still do the job pretty good, although the 7770 might struggle at um, 1080p resolutions. The GTX 650 Ti will handle those nicely, uh, and it should do that fine. Uh, you sh again, you should be able to run most games on Ultra, you might have to drop some to High just to cope because it is not one of the top, top end cards, but the price is a lot lower. If we add that in, we also get Assassin's Creed 3 in there, which if you think for a PC game, that's about 30 quid going in there as well. Um, refresh this page, and we can see that brings the total up to 584. So that is a far more, obviously, perhaps affordable for some people for building, putting together a gaming PC. Obviously, to save money on this build, if you wanted to lower it even further, change the processor out for um, an i3 or go even cheaper and go for an AMD uh, FX series because they'll processor wise will only be about 100 quid whereas this is nearly 180 um, however they're not as um, powerful as Intel um, processors and if you're going to look to buy a PC primarily for Total War based games Go with Intel over AMD if you can. Um, you can save a bit more money, probably, um, well, really, a cheaper case. As long as you get a nice big case, you can't really go wrong. And again, you've got to just be happy with how it looks on the outside, because that's what you're going to see the majority of the time. You're not going to see all these bits inside. You're going to be seeing the outside. So that's where I'm going to wrap up um, the video and the talk. So you've got this one for, we've brought it down to 584. Um, or we've got the beastie 
oh no, I, I cancelled it on here, so we'll just drop that down. Or we've got the other one, which was just shy of £800. Now, if you'd like me to do uh, any other various uh, builds, i.e. a cheaper 400 to £450 build, gaming build, then again, comment below, thumb it up. If there's enough people commenting that sort of thing and thumbing it up, then I will do it. Uh, again, if you want me to see it, do an even more powerful, extensive build, uh, say a £1,000 budget, then I will do one of them. And also, if you would like me to cover what perhaps keyboards, mice, and monitors I would recommend, I can do a separate build, uh, a separate video even for peripherals and things like that. Uh, or if you just like me to cover graphics cards for one whole video, or power supplies, or, or any single component. If enough of you ask or thumb up a comment, then I will seriously consider doing one, because I can probably do one in about 5-10 to 10 minutes and upload the video. So if there's any questions as well you have, please comment. It, if I can't seem to get around to answering most people's comments, uh, then probably the better way of doing it is PMing me if you have a specific build request um, or question. Uh, in fact, yeah, if you've got a kind of in-depth in or detailed question about just general PC building and things like that, then PM it to me. Um, and also, uh, if you'd like to see a, a kind of me covering quite a few different sites, pre-built systems, rather than building from parts, because if you're not that confident with building one, then this may not be for you. But as I've said, Novatech, as far as I know, still offer, um, I think it's £50 per hour of labour to put parts together but this wouldn't take them more than an hour to put together anyway so it'd be an extra 50 quid and they would put all these parts together for you you still have to install the operating system which again i've not included here um but that's pretty easy you put a disc in the hard drive and you turn the computer on <laughs> so um that's pretty much where all i'm going to say you guys know about anything you want me to follow up these this video with uh then just comment in the description and i will get to that um just to add into that american viewers um or if there's enough of you from sort of Europe and you're using euros, if you would like me to do a build in your native currency of dollars or euros, uh, then again, let me know. And ideally with that, probably send me a PM to a couple of websites or US-based websites or euro-based websites um, that I can easily navigate around. So as always, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this has been helpful. If not, then sorry. Uh, there'll be some more gaming videos coming up very, very shortly for you. I hope you're having a fantastic Christmas um, and get all the gifts you want. So as always, hope you enjoyed.